backyard east side rc today is sunday service time so if you're not interested in today's video you can gladly check out the video that i'm going to drop after this or before this i'm not sure it's going to be an rc brat video with some tech tips all right so if you guys are interested in that check it out but if not welcome to sunday service time Y'all, what we're going to be talking about today is we're going to be continuing on with some gospel truth, all right? Because that's where we, we, we left off last weekend, and I gave you guys a full breakdown, almost a full breakdown of John chapter 1, verse 1, all right? So we're going to be looking at verse 2 today and going through that and possibly verse 3 and 4. I got a pile of scriptures and a pile of truth for you guys. All right, so I want to I want to first uh, share with you guys this footnote from John chapter one verse one that said in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. I just want to clarify this footnote and then we're going to get right into this the other one. Okay, first John John one the Greek word used here for God is Theos and denotes deity as an object of worship. This word is used 1,338 times in the New Covenant, the New Testament. Only 12 times is the word used to express anything but eternal deity. Here, the word reveals Jesus as God in the flesh. John 1.14 and 1 Timothy 3.16 will clarify that. These scriptures attest to Jesus' divinity, Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, and Matthew 1, 23. Alone, let's see. Okay, yeah, that's it. In Matthew 1, 23. Okay, so you guys can clarify that by looking at those scriptures, and that will give you a more understanding to what I spoke on last weekend for chapter 1, verse 1. Now, we're going to be taking a look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, the same was in the beginning with God. Now, I'm going to back this up with some clarification, okay? First, I can give no praise, man. Praise God for this time, guys. <laughs> yes! Praise God for all the truth that I've been getting. I studied through this Bible all week long to give you guys this service time, man. I've been beaten up. I've been getting attacked by Satan, man, like crazy, it just, uh, it, it's just, it, it sucks. So if you guys want to pray for me, man, I could, I would definitely appreciate your prayers because I need some prayers for comfort, man. And I got the comforter with me. I have the Holy Spirit within me. I shouldn't need anything but the Holy Spirit within me, but I am human. And, you know, sometimes we get beaten up, man. I was feeling so much anxiety today. It was just terrible. I don't have anxiety issues. I don't know why I was having so much anxiety, but I went over to mom and dad's. We brapped, had some family time, and I feel fantastic. So let's get deep in the word, shall we? All right. Like I said, John chapter 1, verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. Now some backup scriptures here for understanding will be Genesis chapter 1, 1 verse 1 and verse 26. Verse 1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 26 says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our image. Why is it our image? Because Jesus was with him in the beginning as the word, as God created things. God did not create anything without going through Jesus, all right? He spoke through Jesus. Jesus was the word that God used to call things into existence, all right? So I'm going to break this down and clarify this for you guys. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over and over the cattle, over all the earth, 
and every and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God has given us dominion over all animals, guys. So what does that mean there? That means that we can tame any animal, and it's rightfully so, because we have dominion over the animals, all right? John 17, 5 tells us, words in red, Jesus says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself. See there, the hour that I was talking about? Oh, and now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. See the truth there, guys? If you want the, the best clarification and the best understanding, like I said, is Scripture itself. All the answers are right here in the Bible for you to understand. You just got to know where to pull them out and know where to find them. And if you don't know where, that's why we got study Bibles. That's why we have 54-year seasoned pastors <laughs> to help us out, all right? But you got to make sure you're going to, you know, getting the truth. You don't want a pastor that's um, religious and has skipped a lot of things in the Bible on healing and whatnot. You know, you don't want that. You don't want, you don't want that to happen. You want the whole truth because only the whole truth is going to set you free and give you the utmost clarification. All right. So Revelations 1.8, another backup scripture for this. And these are all from the New King James Bible that I'm, I'm uh, giving you guys these scriptures. Okay. Revelations 1.8. And 11. 8 says, from Jesus, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. 11 states that Jesus is the first and the last. <laughs> All right? He's the first and the last, meaning Alpha and Omega. All right, that's the first and the last. It just reiterates what eight says. Not a contradiction, just the truth. All right, four, the fourth scripture that I've got here for you guys is Revelations 2, 8. And these are all pertaining to John chapter 1, 2. Backing up and, and clarifying with truth, John 1, 2. Eight, Revelations 2, 8 says, And the angel of the church... In Samira, write, these things says the first and the last, who was dead and, and came to life. Revelations 22, 13 says, Jesus states again, he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. All right? With God always from the beginning. All right, so now we're going to take a look at John chapter 1, 3 out of the King James Version Bible. And it tells us, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. <laughs> Truth to what I just told you guys about God not doing anything without Jesus. All right. It's all about Jesus, guys. It is all about Jesus. <laughs> the Christ Almighty, man. I'm telling you, Jesus is awesome. Okay? He is awesome. All right. So, what we're going to back these scriptures up with right here is uh, John. Let me see. Hold on here. Yep. Okay, we're going to do, uh, the first scripture is footnote, we're going to read footnote three, right from this, this uh, study Bible here. Footnote three tells us, Jesus was not created. He was God and already existed in the beginning. God created all things through Jesus. This is another proof of Jesus's deity he is the creator, not the created. <laughs> Powerful words right there, man. All right. 
Oh my goodness. How about that, man? Jesus is the creator, not the created. So awesome that is, guys. All right, and some backup scriptures to give you guys from here are, we're going to start with Psalms 33, 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. All right, so another scripture here is John 1, 10 from the King James Version. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Even when Jesus walked the earth and proclaimed that he was God in the flesh, nobody believed him. They didn't believe him. A, a lot of people did, but there were a vast majority that did not believe in him. Now we're going to take a look at a New King James Version scripture to back this up as well with more truth. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. 6 tells us, Yet for us there is one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we for him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through him all things, and through whom we live. Through him, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Ephesians 3, 9, more truth out of the New King James Version Bible tells us, and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. <laughs> right in the scriptures, man. The truth lies within the living word of God. Colossians 1, 16 and 17 out of the New King James Version tells us more backup scriptures here to give us the truth. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. <laughs> Man, I love the truth, guys. I am telling you, I found such greatness this whole week while studying for the Lord. Not to mention it uplifted my soul. Another scripture for you guys is Hebrews 1, 2 out of the New King James Version. 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 <laughs> Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. <laughs> Such greatness here. And you guys, you guys get the scripture, right? All things were made by him, and without him, not anything was made that was made. That's, what's, that's what all these scriptures are, clarifying and backing up the truth here that John wrote. In, the, in, in his gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we're going to take a look at another scripture here. And it is scripture four. And this scripture states, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now let's dig into it and dissect the scriptures and get some more truth to clarify that. All right? Let's read it one more time. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. All right? <laughs> I love the word, guys. I absolutely, I'm in love with the word. I'm in love with God's living word. I'm telling you, it's food for your soul. If you guys have an area in your life where you're getting just beaten up, man, you need to turn to the word. The word will seriously help you. You've got to read the word and understand it. Okay, John 5, 26 out of the New King James Version tells us, Jesus says, For as the Father has life in himself, so has he granted the Son to have life in himself. 1 John 5, 11, 12 tells us, out of the New King James, And this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. 12, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life, 
What does that mean? If you have accepted Christ Jesus into your heart and you believe that he is your Lord and personal Savior and that he died for your sins and you have confessed your sins and believe that Christ Jesus has rose from the grave and, li and, 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 and lives at the right hand throne with God and sent his Holy Spirit back to be with each and every one of us. If you believe that, you will have eternal life, everlasting life with God. But it states right here, and Jesus and the word of God ain't joking around. He who does not have the son does not have life. You cannot and you will not get to heaven without Jesus Christ. Okay, it's all about Jesus. There is no other way except through Christ Jesus. When you are praying to God, you pray through Christ Jesus or your prayer is not heard. It must be done through Jesus. It's all about Jesus. That's why I'm so dead set on speaking about Jesus, okay? Now, the next scripture here is Isaiah 9, 2 out of the New King James Version Bible. To the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. That light is Christ Jesus. Isaiah 49, 6 says out of the New King James Version Bible, Indeed, he says, It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Isaiah says, great scripture. John eight twelve, which is also on my scope to my AR-15 rifle. John eight twelve is right on there. I have a Trijicon scope and Trijicon is a Christian owned scope company. And they put scriptures in little tiny verses, just the verse. It'll say JN 8 dot dot 12. It says it right on my scope, okay? And my scope illuminates light at night, all right? That's, that's, what it, that's what it's designed for. And would you believe that the military, two guys complained about that, so they sent sandpaper and black paint to sand the scripture off if anybody doesn't want that scripture on their scope. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm out in the desert in the so-called valley of the shadow of death, I want to have the Lord's light watching over me. <laughs> I would never be sanding any scriptures off of my scopes. That is so petty to want to do something like that. Shame on the soldiers for getting rid of that. And, I, and shame on Trijicon for sending that stuff out. If you don't like it, then don't use their scopes. It's as simple as that. John 8, 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, Words in red from Christ, I am. You guys ever heard Jesus called the great I am? All through the Bible, he says, I am. Jesus is the great I am. The great I am, the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of life. <laughs> yeah! When I seen that on my scope, I was like, yes! Thank you, Mom, for getting me that scope for Christmas. That was just awesome, man. I love my mom and dad, y'all. God bless y'all. I love y'all so much. Thank you for being there for me last night. Thank you for being there for me today. Thank you for being there for me each and every step of the way throughout my whole entire life. I love you guys. I can't tell you enough. Now, my uh, last scripture that clarifies this is John 9, 5 out of the King, New King James Bible. And it, this is to clarify more of verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus states in John 9, 5, As long as I am 
in the world. I am the light of the world. Ha <laughs> ha! Praise you, Jesus. Yes, you are my guiding light. You guys need a, a, a your path lit. Well, I tell you, get lit with the Lord, son. He will light your way and show you the way. All right, man. I'm feeling the spirit. All right. Now, my closing scripture with for you guys today is Psalm seventy-eight forty-one. I have it as a sticker on the back of my windshield, and here it is right here. 41 tells us, yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. I'm telling you guys, don't limit the Lord. There is nothing too great, too big, or too small for the Lord to handle. If you got something going on in your life, such as I do, give it to God. God can change, man. God can change. We say, oh, well, you know, the person's got to want to change. That is limiting God. That's limiting God. God can transform a person. God can renew the mind. God can put the love back in a hardened heart. All right? That's the truth. So that is Sunday service time for you guys today. God bless y'all. I love y'all. I hope everybody has a super blessed week. All right? Remember that Jesus loves you. Okay? Love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Woo! Eastside RC.